on guys, I got freaking like literally an hour before I need to leave to work, so let's get this shit done. Number one, freaking Gordon's uncle is a part of the Court of Owls, that's what we talked about in the last video. Also, Clone Bruce came back, which is something we said that he was gonna do a long time ago, and now he's basically gonna be little Bruce Wayne, which was pretty much the most obvious thing we knew he was gonna do. Um, they cleared up his scars, and now they are going to put Bruce Wayne in place of you know, Wayne Enterprises, so that's going to be a weird dynamic of Bruce versus Bruce, uh, which is something we always thought was going to happen on the show anyways, because why wouldn't it? Number two, the freaking Court of Owl statue got broken by Jerome. Didn't break the first time, but definitely broke the second time, because anytime you throw something near a fireplace, it's going to break for some reason. I don't know why, but it just does, because I've done it before. Uh, but anyways, so that broke. What I'm going to assume is that Bruce and Alfred are going to put it back together, and they're going to realize you know, whatever the thing is. I don't know why it would be kind of stupid to like go through all that trouble to steal that and then it breaks and then they don't figure out anything from it. But uh, yeah, I have a feeling that they're going to put it back together and that's when they're going to figure out the shiny map or whatever that uh, was inside of it. Number three, it wasn't a freaking bomb. I don't know why I said it was a bomb when I did my video with the whole Jerome thing. I think it's because of this photo right here. I thought it looked like a bomb because I saw the circleness of it, but it was really just the ass of the cannon. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to correct that real quick. Number four, didn't like Lee in this episode. I know in the last episode, I thought Lee was all like, oh, she's a badass. She's not salty. Now I really, I mean, I, I said she was salty in the last one, but she had the right to be. But now her saltiness is starting to get to me. And I was like, okay, Lee, you can get out of bitch mode. I get it. You're mad at Gordon, but people are dying here. Come on, you gotta work with us. And then she did eventually work with us. But you know, I don't know, like, at least starting to get annoying to me now, but she's still kind of a badass. Like, if she does what she did with Jerome, that was badass. But, uh, you know, you know, I'm getting a little tired of the bitch mode. And I'm gonna stop counting down there because I want to talk about Riddler and Penguin and everything that happened in this episode. Because a lot of you, or some of you, on social media were freaking out, and I don't get why. First things first, I think I really like this part of the episode. And I know, like, everything should have got shadowed or overshadowed by the whole Jerome versus Bruce thing, which I think was supposed to be the main part of this episode. But the Riddler and Penguin dynamic of this episode was really good, and I don't want people to uh, not look into that just because we had the first ever Batman versus Joker fight over here. Um, but no, with this whole thing was pretty good. We finally got to see the end of this whole like little like let's torture Penguin thing, and I think they did it really well. Like you said in the breakdown video that uh, Penguin was actually going to be put onto a car and Edward was going to drop acid on him. And that's what we saw. That's exactly what happened. Ed tricked uh, Penguin into coming to Ace Chemicals and he was able to set up everything there. And, you know, just talked about how he loved Isabella and blah, blah, blah. And told Penguin how love really is supposed to be. And Penguin confessed his love to him, blah, blah, blah. We saw all of that going down. And that was all pretty cool. But I just loved freaking Ed's intensity in this thing. Like, he didn't let up at all. And, like, he had everything planned out, and Penguin never got the upper hand. I thought Penguin, at one point, was going to get the upper hand in this whole thing and come back and try to fight Ed, but that did not happen, which was, you know, pretty good. I actually like that they just went with, with, like, full throttle with one story, and one person had the upper hand the whole time. I don't know about you guys, but the way Penguin survived was kind of cheesy, but at the same time, I was waiting for that security guard to go out there and actually cut the ropes, or think he was about to cut the ropes and be like, nah, we're just tricking you. Riddler wanted me to come out and do this. But that was te technically part of the plan. They wanted... Riddler, or they wanted Penguin to escape. They wanted to give him hope that, you know, he wasn't going to, um, or that he was going to be able to get out of it and, like, try to kill Ed and try to kill everybody else. But turns out, that was, the, you weren't going to be able to do that, Penguin. Like, they had every single thing planned. Um, you know, the security guard was part of the plan, got him out, although they cut it really close there, so I don't know why oh, that plan could have been really bad. Security guard saved Penguin, he went to his house, that's why Butch and Tabitha were there, had that little freaking spat that they were doing, you know, talking, trying to be whatever. I note this, but Tabitha, I really don't like her character anymore. I don't like her, it's the same old, same old, getting tired of it, and I have a theory about what's gonna happen with her in the future. Butch and Tabitha take Penguin to the Sirens Club. That's where they meet Barbara. Barbara's talking all this mess and they find out that Edward comes out because they're looking for Ed and it turns out that Penguin admits that he can actually love and 
freaking Ed is just like, oh, well, I wasn't kind of expecting that. Whatever. They were all working together in this whole thing when you thought Penguin or whoever was going to go ahead and betray. Uh, this is why I hate making videos in a hurry. When Edward, you thought Barbara and the whole gang was going to betray Ed because they wanted to kill him. Like, they were throwing you off the whole time when technically they were working together the whole freaking time. Although I still think they're gonna try to kill him because remember, uh, Tabitha got her hand cut off because of him. So I don't know why that didn't happen, although it might happen on the next episode because maybe they do want to kill him after all. But I thought they were gonna do something because they could have easily popped off both of them really quickly in the Siren Club, but they didn't. They're allowing him to keep working with this whole Penguin thing. All of that nonsense leads to the final showdown between Riddler and Penguin, where Riddler has Penguin on a dock because everything in Gotham happens at the docks. He has a gun to him, telling him that he's going to kill him, blah, blah, blah. They exchange words, I love you, I loved Isabella, blah, blah, blah. And it goes down to Penguin basically saying the same stuff that Fish Mooney did to him, so that was a kind of cool little thing that, you know, Penguin was saying, I created you, I know who you really are, blah, blah, blah. Fish Mooney basically said the same thing to Penguin when she died. Died, And, uh, you know, it was pretty cool. Like, it was a cool little dynamic. This time, though, it's Penguin that, you know, falls into the water and dies because he got blasted in the gut. Penguin is not going to die, guys. He's not going to die. Everybody's like, you're going to hate this episode. Or, you know, oh my god. Like, how would they do that? Why would they do that? Blah, 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 blah. He's not going to die. They are not going to kill Penguin before Batman is Batman. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, you can kill off some people, okay? You can kill off Galavan because Galavan wasn't a character. Asriel, that character could easily come back if they wanted to because that per the person that's been Asriel has changed identities before. Like, you can go ahead and do shit like that. You're not going to destroy big characters like Penguin and Riddler and all that. Penguin is going to come back and he's going to come back like super pissed off and he's going to fuck people up. I'm calling that right now. And I think one of the first people he's going to fuck up is Tabitha because she went... And told them, like, oh, you remember when I stabbed your mom? And blah, blah, blah. Like, Penguin is going to kill her at some point. Like, it's going to happen. He's not going to be soft anymore because he's not going to have Butch. He's not going to have Tabitha. Or he never had Tabitha. He's not going to have Butch. He's not going to have Riddler. His whole gang's pretty much dead. He's going to just fuck people up. And I'm calling that right now because, man, I want him to kill Tabitha. And some of you out there are like, they're not going to kill Tabitha because she's Tigress. Who cares about Tigress? Like, one, I don't, why? Tigress isn't even a big character in Batman. Two, they could probably introduce her as Tigress. And a lot of people are going to be like, who's Tigress? And, like, it doesn't even care. Like, if you saw just Young Justice, you know who Tigress is there. But that doesn't even freaking matter in the comics! Tigress is not a big person in the Batman comics. They could easily kill Tabitha. And when when are they going to make Tigress a big thing? How could you ever make Tigress, like, a big person in Gotham? And, like, I haven't even heard confirmation of that. Somebody told me to go look at the Gotham page and look at the titles. And it just said Tigress next to her name. But when have they ever said that? I don't know why Gotham would even put that in there. And I feel like probably their peoples that are writing that shit probably just messed up because they weren't... Why would you put that in there? I don't give a fuck about Tigress. That's all I'm saying. Tabitha is somebody that could die and Penguin is going to kill her this season, if not next season. Now let's go ahead and freaking talk about Jerome versus Bruce because man that's what this episode was about like I said even though I said don't get don't overshadow the penguin riddler thing but still this episode was about that and before we jump into all of that yes we saw Alfred get saved by Gordon for the badrillion time Gordon's just always there Gordon's a magician he just shows up at the perfect time all the time and why the hell did Gordon shoot the guy with the machete and not the fucking guy with the Uzi when Alfred was all like oh you guy in the corner with the Uzi you're just gonna shoot me in the face oh you guy in the middle with the crowbar you're just gonna crowbar my face oh you guy right in front of me with the machete you're just gonna machete my face Gordon why do you not shoot the guy with the gun Alfred literally just told you you in the corner of the room you got a gun you're gonna shoot me in the face you shoot that guy with the gun first because 
because it's longer range. I don't know how Gordon has stayed alive in Gotham so long when he doesn't listen to people's advice like that. Like he just went up there, bang, shoot the guy, shut up, Bo. Seriously though, like Gordon, he flat out. I thought that's how the the scene was gonna go down. I thought. Alfred was strategically, if I could say the word right, telling Gordon how to defeat the room. And he just went up in there, shoot the guy in the middle. Oh, oh, shoot the guy in the freaking machete or whatever. No, go freaking Alfred stabbed the dude with the machete. And then Gordon has to dive away and everybody could have got capped by a dude with an Uzi. Oh man, I don't know. I just thought that scene was hilarious. I was like, dude! All right, from that point, we see Jerome versus Bruce. That is the episode. That's where it starts, right there when they kidnap him. And that is when it starts. When Batman rises from the ashes and he is born. I don't know why I got so much energy today, but I should really just finish this video, but I'm not because I just got so much to talk about. But that is where we see Batman because freaking Bruce starts doing the one thing that Batman always does and he stalls. He will stall like a motherfucker to get more time to think about how to beat his enemies and that's exactly what he did. He was like, oh, Jerome, you're just going to kill me in my house, bro? In my motherfucking house? You're just going to kill me? Oh, no. Let's make this a show, bro. You got to have an audience. I'm Bruce motherfucking Wayne. I run this shit. You better kill me in front of a bunch of people. And that is exactly what Jerome does. Jerome is all like, you know what? You make a valid point. And boom, that's when the whole carnival circus thing starts. And I got to say, was pretty badass. And I had a lot of you in my last video saying like, Hey, Juice, uh, it's way more the Dark Knight than it is the Killing Joke. Oh, no. Oh, no. I get where you guys are saying because it had a mirror scene and they fought in the mirror scene. And I'm going to say that it is, it's way more Killing Joke. Like, I showed you guys in the last video why it's more Killing Joke. But I will go ahead and compromise and say that they took the mirror scene from Killing Joke and the mirror scene from The Dark Knight and combined them. And the reason why I'm going to say that is because the whole Dark Knight freaking theory that everybody's talking about is uh, that episode or that uh, video video, that freaking movie comic book does not have the hexagon mirror scene, which is where Bruce and Jerome fought in this episode. And the Killing Joke does have the hexagon mirror scene. So, bada bing, bada boom. That's why I say it's more Killing Joke than Dark Knight. Anyways, I digress. Let's go ahead and get back to the whole thing. So, we see Bruce starting to come up with his whole idea of not wanting to kill. You know, Jerome's taking him through the circus and he's all like, oh, let's go ahead and do this, Bruce. You try him saw to save, you, you saw him try to save, man, my brain just, pfft. Uh, you try, you saw him try to save somebody with the whole piranha thing, and I looked a little closer, unfortunately, it was not Smiley Joker Fish, which was, I was really hoping for that. It looked like, uh, just, they had red bellies or something like that, but I was kind of hoping it was gonna be freaking Joker Fish, but maybe one day, Gotham, maybe one day. Anyways, you saw Bruce push Jerome out of the way to try to save that guy, but Jerome was like, boop! And that guy still died, and then, you know, that kind of made Bruce feel bad. But, you know, that happens. Batman tries to save... Batman's not going to be able to try to save everybody. It's just what happens, and it's collateral damage a part of the job. And at that point, we see Jerome's face falling off. He's got to staple that shit back together. And, you know, Bruce says some shit, and Joker's all like, Oh, okay, cut And he freaking staples his arm, and Bruce is just there, like, twice, like, all oh, badass. Like, oh, yeah? You think that fucking hurt? Do it again, bitch. And he does it again. He's like, you think it hurts, bitch? Let's do that. And you hear the freaking, like, heroic music, like, dun, 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 all coming up and shit. And then the third one, he's like, ow! Because who likes getting staples in their arm? It's not fun. I got it in my elbow before, and it is terrible. You scream like a little kid. Granted, I was a little kid when I got those staples out of my arm, but still, I would still scream like a little kid today. Fast forward to the freaking circus scene where Jerome is being the ring bearer or whatever, and he's all like, oh, ring master ringleader whatever you want to call it and he's putting on a show and he's about to kill Bruce with some very craziness stuff and uh <laughs> it is just insane he threw a cannonball in there knives nails like he was gonna fuck up Bruce but I mean it was so badass that they went with Bruce making himself escape and I told you guys there, there was gonna need to be something that Bruce was going to have to do it on his own. That there was going to be a reason that Bruce was going to escape himself. Because there was no way he was going to be able to fight Jerome. Or there was no way that Gordon and Alfred were going to let him go fight Jerome. So he was going to have to escape himself. And Gordon and Strike Force coming in was going to be that decoy 
of like l allowing him that time to escape. And I think Gotham did it really badass. You know, Bruce, it could have been, you know, that could have been his plan to actually get the staples in his arm so he could have something to actually, you know, unlock, pick himself from being captured. And Batman is a motherfucking escape artist, and that is what Bruce did. He just escaped, and it was artistic. This was the most Batman-heavy episode, and it was fucking awesome. They had the epic music, he freaking escaped, and then he went to go fight the Joker in the hexagon mirror room and it was badass because he wanted him in there. That's right, freaking Bruce said he wanted him in there and he walked him in there, freaking Jerome wasted all his bullets when he was in there and he was all like, oh, let's go, bitch. And he had a knife up his sleeve and Bruce came out and he speared him. He was like, spear, bitch. And then they freaking kept fighting and Bruce beat the shit out of him. But I gotta say, I did like freaking Monaghan. was like, oh, come on, come on, let's fight. Let's fight. You wanna put up your dukes? That was badass because that's exactly what Joker would do. That was a really good thing that freaking Monahan did there. I gotta give you give you props on that Monahan, but I will. I gotta criticize you in here in a bit, but let's finish talking. So we see badass Bruce freaking beating the shit out of Jerome, and then he starts punching him and punching him and punching him, and his face starts falling off, and he's punching him, and Jerome is all like, "Let it out!" Like he's just telling him to let it out, and it is just so badass because that is the moment. That Batman comes up with his no kill rule. He has the freaking glass shard in his head and he wants to kill Jerome, but he's all like, no, bitch, I'm not gonna be evil like you, motherfucker. And Bruce doesn't kill Jerome like Batman would. That Batman would make sense, I don't know. Bruce then leaves Jerome's beat ass in the mirror room. He goes out, he's like, Alfred! And they hug and you know, they embrace and they're like, I love you. Jerome comes back out. Freaking Gordon's there, and I thought Gordon for a split millisecond was going to shoot Jerome, but homeboy just goes and literally punches his face off. He was like, Punk him! Punch! And fucking Jerome's face flew off, and then Gordon, you know, he fell to the ground and whatever, and Jerome's face fell in the puddle, and that face is gonna need to be disinfected a lot. At the end of the episode, you hear Gordon and Bullock talking, and they say that once Jerome gets his face put back on, he's being sent to Arkham. Ooh! What's gonna happen in Arkham? I don't know! I believe somebody named by Harley Quinzel is going to show up on the finale, and she, her origin, was freaking starting to work at Arkham, and holy shit, are they gonna go ahead and start the whole Harley Quinn and Joker thing? I fucking think so! Actually, I know so. They've already said that. Harley Quinzel will be showing up on the finale of this episode. We talked about this. A lot of you guys were freaking out. You're like, Juice, Jerome is gonna die. Juice, Jerome is gonna die. Oh my god, I think they're gonna die because what Cameron Mona had said in this interview, and oh my god, it just seems like he's gonna die. No, he's not. They're not gonna kill freaking freaking Monahan, okay? They're not gonna bring him. Because I know Gotham has done some stupid things, but they would be super stupid to go ahead and kill Jerome again. And like I told you people, you cannot have Harley Quinn without the Joker. So season four is gonna be the tits or the dicks, you know, if you're, if you're into that. Okay, before we move on to the final thing and my probably favorite part of the episode, uh, I just gotta give a little criticism of, you know, freaking Jerome, AKA Cameron Monaghan. Oh, I know. Oh, what just, oh, what? You can only talk about Cameron Monaghan? I'm gonna unsubscribe right now. If you wanna overreact like that, then go ahead, meanie. But what I'm gonna say is I loved a lot. I wanna say I love like 90% of Monaghan's freaking performance tonight, although I have been a big advocate of saying that he's a little watered down Heath Ledger, although some of the stuff he did tonight was pretty good. Still don't think he's the best Joker. I think some of you guys are overreacting there. Mark Hamill's the best Joker. What? Anyways, like I said, you can have your opinion if you think he's the best. I don't think he's the best because, you know, he's a copycat of Heath Ledger, like 50% of Ledger's performance. Anyways, one of the biggest things I didn't like about him is that his voice doesn't stay the same. It doesn't stay in one type of thing. He's changing it a lot and that was kind of taking me out of the character. Like, if you go look at when he was talking to Bruce in his house, his voice is very different from when he's talking to him at the carnival rink. The voice isn't consistent and it bothered the hell out of me when I was watching this episode. I was like, stay in the like, oh hey Bruce, what are you gonna do buddy? You wanna, you wanna touch my face? And then he was all like, ladies and gentlemen. Like, it's like, whoa, 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 chill out. Like, it was very two different types of voices and that was kind of annoying me. Um, I loved his performance. Like, I love what he was doing. Like I said, when he did the whole boxing glove shit, that was awesome. Like, I loved that. And I'm not saying, I'm not trying to hate on his Joker. It's just the voice thing was annoying me. 
And I was just like, stick to one voice, bro. Uh, but when you go into that low, like, oh, hey, buddy, like that voice is kind of hard to like have range. And that's why like, you know, Ledger did it really well. Like if you go back and watch The Dark Knight Returns or The Dark Knight, I don't know why I said Dark Knight Returns. Uh, if you go back and watch, you know, Nolan's freaking The Dark Knight, Ledger stays in the same voice the whole time. And when he has to give that bigger performance, he does a little bit more angriness, but you don't see his voice change. And that's why I'm saying Monaghan is really like taking from Joker because when he does that like cool, like, hey, Joker voice, uh, he's taking that from Ledger. And that's what Ledger did. But Ledger did the thing the whole time and it made sense. That was his voice. But yeah, so Monaghan's like voice cracking, kind of changing did kind of annoy me, but I liked everything else he did in this episode. Now to my favorite part of the episode, and that was the conversation between Bruce Wayne and Alfred Pennyworth when they're cleaning up his arm. And I just loved it because he mentioned like the difference between knowing where the line is and knowing when to cross it or whatever. And like, you know, you can't cross it because that line is justice or something along the lines. I know I just butchered that whole quote or whatever, but they use the freaking word justice. And I was like, oh, like, that was freaking badass when they used it. And then Bruce is all like, uh, Alfred's all like, if you're going to start doing this and you're going to be doing this more, you're going to need to have a set of rules. And he's like, I will not kill. And I was like, Aah! Bruce now has a set of rules like Batman would. That was my favorite part of this episode because I have been telling you guys, if you've been watching these reviews since I've started doing them, I have been wanting to see Bruce start becoming more and more about the Batman character. He doesn't need to put on the cow. He does not need to put on the cow, but I want to see him train. I want to see him get into some scuffles. I want to see him do all of this other shit. And I think Gotham is finally listening to me. If you're watching my videos, hire me. I'm telling you, fuck, jeez. That sounded rude, Gotham, I apologize, but please, yo, come on, man, we got ideas, let's do this. Anyways, that has been one of the biggest things I've wanted in Gotham for so long, and to see him fight Jerome, you know, it's just that symbolism of the first of many fights between Joker and Batman, seeing him come up with his rules that he's not going to kill, knowing that he's going to have to be better than everybody, seeing him become an escape artist by taking the freaking thing out of his hand and unlock picking shit, like, it was just... It was so awesome to finally see Bruce taking big steps towards Batman. And I can't wait to see what they're going to do with this character going forward. If you've seen some of the past videos, I've already talked about what they have planned for the future possibly. So we're really excited what they have planned for Bruce if this show continues for a few more seasons. And I think that was just pretty badass and I can't wait to see what's going to happen. But anyways, I want to know what you guys thought of this episode in the comment sections down below. Let me know, did you think Cameron Monaghan was 100% the best Joker of all time? I don't think so. Did you like the whole Batman-ness of this episode? And did you honestly think Penguin died? Like, come on, like, did you really be honest? Leave me in, let me know in the comment section down below. Guys and gals, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with all your Gotham buddies. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for all things nerdy and geeky on this channel. As always, I am your host, Juice Box. Remember, when you wake up in the morning, ask yourself something. If I have my daily dose of juice, see you guys next time. Bam!